Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Monday Morning Inspirations. We are just so delighted to have Paula Nira with us again. Thank you, Paula. Um, so today's inspiration is about don't give up the ship. Without hope, the us's will give up. You have to give people hope, and that's Harvey Milk. When faced with difficult times, we must find a way to endure and help others around us to endure. We must hold on to hope for ourselves and provide others with hope that things can be survived and that a better future outcome or situation is always possible. Defeat only happens when one gives up hope. Hope is often an act of defiance. One can be hopeful in adversity by building a strong vessel, putting together the ship that sails through life in the mindset and outlook that is strong and resilient. Like building ships, this is a process that takes patience. So a Navy Academy graduate and formal, former Navy officer, Paula has served our country in and out of uni uniform for four decades. After service in the Navy, she became a registered nurse certified in emergency nursing and specializing in adult emergency care and trauma resuscitation. From 2008 to 2016, Paula served as a nurse educator in emergency medicine at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. She also served as the co-chair of the Johns Hopkins Transgender Medicine Executive Task Force. In November of 2016, she became the first clinical program director of the Hopkins Center for Transgender Health. As an attorney and veteran advocate, she was a leader in the repeal of the don't ask, don't tell policy and changing the regulations to allow for open transgender military service. In 2015, she made naval history as the first trans transgender Navy veteran to have her discharge documentation updated to reflect her correct name by order of the Navy. In 2016, the Secretary of the Navy named her to be the co-sponsor of the USNS Harvey Milk TAO T06. In 2020, she was inducted as a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing. She also serves as the board secretary for GLNA, Health Professionals Advancing LGBTQ Equality and National Healthcare Professional Association. Wow, Paula. Um, what an uh, impressive bio. So we are just so delighted to have Paula um, here today. And Paula, I'm gonna turn over um, turn over the forum to you, please. Well, good morning. That, that, you know, that, thanks for that introduction. Thanks for inviting me back. It's uh, so great uh, to be able to, to spend some more time with you. And I know we're doing this via Zoom, uh, but one of the things that I'll do next is I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen there uh, can everybody see that so yeah so it's you know and it's a perfect monday morning to be talking about don't give up the ship because the army navy game was this saturday and in case people aren't aware navy pulled off an upset uh and uh, we won a very close tough game uh, so we have bragging rights for the next little bit until we play army and some other sport you know I'm a lawyer. There's the, you know, there, there's the, there's a standard Monday morning lawyer thing. So imagine me reading this in my lawyer voice. Wah, 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 wah. Blame Paula. Don't blame Johns Hopkins or anybody else if you don't like uh, what I say. <laughs> so that phrase, don't give up the ship. I'm, I'm sure everybody may have heard it. And it really is a cry for resilience. It's a cry for uh, defiance. And where it actually comes from is the War of 1812. You know, the USS Chesapeake engaged the HMS Shannon in battle, and the captain of the Chesapeake, a guy named uh, Captain Lawrence, was mortally wounded, and his last order to his crew was, fight her till she sinks, and don't give up the ship. Well, unfortunately, the Shannon won that battle. Uh, the Chesapeake was captured, Lawrence was dead, um, but that battle cry, that, that defiance in the face of defeat. Uh, Lawrence's friend, Oliver Hazard Perry, at the Battle of Lake Erie, also during the War of 1812, had a flag made that says, don't give up the ship. And the replica of that flag sits in Memorial Hall at the Naval Academy. And in Memorial Hall is where we list all of those uh, graduates 
that have been lost in service, either in battle or through operations. And the original flag is in the museum. And that phrase is part of Navy history and tradition that comes down even to today. And I said, you know, you see it even in some things like a football game. It's that will not to succumb to adversity. It's the recognizing that, yeah, things are tough, but that you're only defeated when you say you're defeated. And you know, the reality is that we are right now living in divisive times. They're tough, they're challenging. You know, we're in stormy seas to continue the nautical flavor of my comments. We're dealing with a historic pandemic now in its second year that while there's light at the end of the tunnel, we've seen some progress. There's lots of hope and we're gonna talk about more about hope. We're not done. You know, we're hopefully going to be able to spend more time with our loved ones this holiday season than last holiday season. But it's still not going to get back to the before time. It's still going to feel different. And for far too many of us, there's going to be an empty seat at the table. Because we have suffered loss as we go through this. He's on dealing with the pandemic here in the United States and you know, for a very US centric comment, we're living in very divisive times. In fact, probably more divisive um, in most many of our lifetimes since the 1960s. And as a country, not since the time of the Civil War. And it really is a clash of values, the fundamental values of seeing what this country is, what we owe to each other. And we're in it, whether we like it or not, we're here, we've got to deal with this. So how do we survive? How do we, how do we find a way to, to deal with everything around us, both for ourselves and then everybody else, you know, our family, our friends, you know, our fellow human beings. Well, the reality is, is that we have to go out into those storm-tossed seas. You know, we've got to deal with life. We can't just retreat into the house. I took a week off for Thanksgiving, and I literally slept for a week. I would get up, grab something to eat, go back to bed and nap, because that's how emotionally and physically exhausted I am from being, from being, <laughs> really. You know, doing the work that we do, you know, trying to take care of people in healthcare, our family responsibilities, um, you know, seeing a continual stream of generally bad news, that kind of stuff. So we've got to go out into this. You know, we can't just, you know, can't pull the covers over our heads and stay in bed. So how do we build ourselves? How do we create the mindset that gives us the strength to go ahead and do that. And you know, the notion that we've got to build a ship and we've got to build a ship strong enough to deal with all of that adversity, to sail in rough waters safely and uh, achieve our various missions and do what we need to do. You know, and one of the always quotes that I always love about ships is that, yeah, a ship in the harbor is safe, and that's not what ships, that's why you don't, uh, ships are not built for that. You know? And you know, to go in harm's way is a quote attributed to John Paul Jones. And from myself, one of the other quotes from John Paul Jones that I live by is, he who will not risk cannot win. And what it means is we have to take chances, calculated risk. Because if we want to be comfortable, if we want to just live in that safe little bubble, we're not going to ultimately be victorious. We're not going to live the most fullest life we can. Because that does take some risk. So you got to build a strong ship. You got to create that mindset and that resiliency to be able to go do that. And the things about building a ship 
the keel of a ship is, you know, back in the days of sail, it would be the large piece of timber at the, at the bottom of the ship, which the rest of the ship would then be constructed upon. When we went to steel, it became a steel, that steel beam at the bottom of the ship. And now we build ships in modules, so there's no real technical steel anymore. But it's that foundation of the ship. And what I would argue for us is the keel that we build upon are our core values. And you always have to be in touch with your values. Because that's what's going to give you that strength. Uh, for me, you know, I say, you know, my core values are reflective of the core values of the service. Honor, courage, commitment. You have to find and be in touch with what your values are. What are the most important things for you? And then you build off of that so that you stay true to your values. And so no matter what the adverse situation you're dealing with is, you've got some strength and you've got consistency. And the thing that I say about being patient, Dan mentioned in my intro and in, you know, my bio is that I was named to be the co-sponsor along with Diane Feinstein of one of our new fleet oilers named after Harvey Milk back in 2016. You know, almost seems like, you know, wow, half a decade ago. Well, from the time of that naming ceremony in August of 2016, the ship is under construction. Last month, I got to go to San Diego. That's me actually smashing the champagne bottle on the bow as we christened the ship, officially gave it, gave it a name. And then it sailed down the ways into the water for the first time. Now, the ship is still not completely built about 75 to 80 percent built they've still got more construction to do on it and it takes that long time and that's one of the things about being patient is you are a work in progress you being able to build you know the ship of your life takes time it can't be rushed you know because you've got to build a structure that's going to last a long time and sail in lots of stormy waves, stormy waters. And it's something that, you know, develops, you know, over time and adversity also strengthens it. It's, you know, it, it's always nice to sail on a pure glass sea. That's, that, that's, that's kind of neat. But that also gets, you know, a little tedious at times. And you really only refine your abilities when you're tested. When things aren't just all going hunky-dory. And the thing, you know, the comment there about returning to dry dock for repairs and upgrades is that over the course of your life, you have to find time to come and repair yourself because Sailing, sailing in storms means that, you know, things are going to break. Over time, metal gets fatigued. So are you. I told you about me taking a week off at Thanksgiving and then sleeping for five days. because That's how beaten up I've, I've been. And I, and I don't think that I'm unique. I, I think all of us, to various degrees, are feeling that these days. I'm taking two weeks off at Christmas and the same day I'm going off the grid. I'm not going to be looking at work email. If I get on my computer, it's going to be to do fun stuff because I've got to take that time to recharge. I've got to take that time to re-energize. Got to take that time to heal. Um, and when you talk about upgrades, that's growth. Yeah. The world is not the same as it was 40 years ago when I joined the Navy. And it's certainly not the same as it was 50 years ago as a child when my childhood dream of being in the Navy for it. So we also have to grow. We also have to sometimes modify ourselves. And that, that's, that's not fun. It, it's, it's often painful. 
often it's a result of adversity and loss. But we have to do it so that we can, again, keep going on our lives. So talking about Harvey Milk. Uh, so, you know, the Harvey Milk is the second ship in the John Lewis class. So every ship in the class is named after a civil rights leader. And the second ship was named after Harvey Milk, who was an iconic uh, LGBTQ leader. Harvey was a, a naval officer whose naval career ended because of anti-gay prejudice in the 1950s when he served. And you know that eventually led him into politics. And he was assassinated in 1978. But some of the things that Harvey Milk said that are absolutely germane for all of us. One is the idea of defiance, about standing up in adversity. And what he talked about in some of the quotes is that, you know, we only have those rights. When we talk about rights or, or we talk about freedom, you only have those rights and those freedoms that you're willing to stand up for because no one's just going to hand it to you. Now, yes. We think that, you know, if we're born in the United States, freedom is our birthright, and it is. And it's our birthright by being human beings. It has nothing really to do with being born in the United States. Every human being has a human right, has a right to liberty, has a right to equality, right to be free. But there are forces in the world. Evil exists. And there have to be people willing to stand up for that, to stand up against that, to say, no, no, no. And it's being able to have that ability to do that, that matters. The other thing that Harvey Milk said, one of the other great speeches that Harvey Milk gave is what's called the Hoop speech. And he gave it several months before he was killed. And in that speech, he talked about the us's. And while Harvey Milk is known as a gay rights leader, his vision was much more broader and really encompassed all of the marginalized groups in our society. The notion of all of those folks who are seen as the other, and whether we're talking about racism, ableism, Cis heteronormativism, ageism, is all of those folks that are fighting to really enjoy our rhetoric. I mean, we have really fantastic rhetoric about freedom and equality, but that isn't the reality for many, many people. And those folks that are involved in those struggles have to have hope. You know, hope that things are going to get better. Hope that things can change. And one of the frustrating things as someone who's been involved in these kind of fights is that that change never comes fast enough. Those who have suffered an injustice will never see justice fast enough. But we keep working for it because we've got to give people hope because when you lose hope is when you finally lose. As long as you can hold on to something, you hold on to that belief that it's going to get better, then you stay in the fight. You stay trying to make progress. And in this speech, you know, uh, Harvey Milk pointed that out to folks. And the last thing at the end of his speech is when he says, and you, and you, and you, you have to give people hope. That's that individual tasking. You also have to hold on to hope for yourself. But then we individually and collectively have to try to bring hope to others. Now, for those of us in healthcare, you know, we, we see this directly in taking care of people. Trying to help people deal with crisis, deal with illness, you know, deal with mortality in some cases. But it's giving people that there is hope, you know, there is comfort, there, you know, there is something that can be done. 
Now, I'm also a sci-fi nerd. And, you know, I love the Star Wars. And Star Wars, you know, for those of you, you know, don't, don't, don't really know much about Star Wars, is Star Wars is really, you know, a modern day telling of ancient tales. Ancient stories that show some of the common themes of humanity set in this fantastical world, you know, far, far away. But as we look at the world that we're actually in, some of this is really real. And the notion of fear, you know, I said we're in divisive times because too many of us are afraid of the other. The fear of the unknown, the fear of people who are different than as we perceive ourselves to be. And yeah, fear does lead to the dark side. You can see the anger on the news and in social media. And anger leads to hate. And you can certainly see people lashing out against the other, the marginalized groups, because they're afraid of the change that they're facing. And just as, you know, that can spread. Just, you know, just as disease can be transmitted, so can fear. And as Harvey Milk was talking about keeping people, giving them something. Hope is the cure. And, you know, if you have hope, the notion of rebellions are built on hope. And it's the rebellion of continuously striving to achieve the better angels of ourselves, continuously striving for that more perfect union, continually striving to make the world a better place. So that one day we really can achieve peace and goodwill. And with that, I wish each of you and yours the happiest and joyous of holidays, whichever holiday that you celebrate. And I personally like to celebrate all of them because there's always a good reason to celebrate. And I hope that you have such a wonderful 2022. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm going to shut up and see what questions or comments or reactions anybody's got. So, Paula, we are so grateful for your powerful, inspiring message. And for all of your advocacy work, you really are a light in our community, in our country and world. Um, and we're just so grateful for you and that you have um, joined us again for inspirations. So wishing you, Paula, and everybody a very, very um, happy and safe holiday. And uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day. <laughs>